Hi, Rita. Hello. Thank you for accepting to do this interview oh, with no me. No problem, yeah. It's really nice to have you here. Yeah, anytime yeah. for a friend, right? Awesome, <laughs> awesome. How about? Yeah. Okay, so Rita, I have here that you are now 19th in the world in female kata. Yeah. Um, some of your most noticeable results were 5th place in the Pan Am, at the Pan Am Championships in, in uh, 2017. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. 5th right? place at Rotterdam. Yeah. And more recently, and congrats on that again, third place at the Pan American Championship yeah, this year. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Am I forgetting something? Is there something you want to add? No, I think that's really the big notable ones. Um, I mean, the little ones where I'm not making it to like medal rounds, it's, I'm still noticing progress, like getting to the third round before like my time is cut short by other uh, athletes. But yeah, yeah, that's the notable ones for sure. Started at 14. 14, okay. I started much later, yeah. Yeah, so you started like quote unquote old. Yeah, right? exactly. I was a late, yeah, late uh, late to the game, I would say. I started because all my cousins uh, joined, and I was like, oh, you know, they're joining, I'll try to. But as soon as I went to that first class, I just fell in love and I stuck with it, like kept learning. And it wasn't about competition, it was just having fun learning all the new things there, right? So for me, it was having fun at first. Before I figured out, I really like competition, yeah. too, right? I do Shito Ryu Karate. I want to say right now it's Anandai that I'd like to do a tournament with. Um, the beginning, like I would say the first few steps of every kata. I like just shooting, just the first bit of the karate. Like I would do that for like at least 30 minutes sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Training schedule, I train, I want to say more or less every day, but I try to fit in at least 18 to 20 hours a week. Yeah. Do you have a day off? Sometimes. Yeah, I want to say once every two weeks. Week before, I would say training comes, the training volume comes down. Um, it's not as intense. Well, it is intense, but it's not like heavy. So I would say like not, maybe an hour and a half total every day. And short bursts of like cuts of movements or I would do a full cut that give myself a ton of rest. So that would help me prepare in that way in a lot of mental um, visualization, like in terms of how to activate mine, just so it's ready by the time it's competition time, right? I want to say rice and chicken. Rice, rice and, and chicken. chicken, yeah. Very traditional. Yeah, it is. Pasta doesn't cut it for me. Rice okay. and chicken works, yeah. Well, rice is like Asian pasta. Right? Yeah, exactly, right? I think too much, analyze too much during the kata. Um, that happens a lot, or I second guess myself and I reserve. You can't reserve, you have to go, right? Always commit to it, right? So for me, I feel like the reason why I lose is I think too much during the kata. So of course you get afraid and you freeze up and you can't shoot. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like the biggest thing for me. I, I'm still working on it right now. Right now, uh, my current coach is doing like so much for me and I feel like it is helping. I am like progressing a lot and my current coach, Katarina, Karate Canada coach, um, back home, my sensei has always been supportive, but right now he's kind of watching me from afar, which is fine, like um, just letting me do my own thing. And I kind of want to say, I don't, they're not considered coaches, but my group in the dojo is like, they always give me feedback and that's like helping me progress as well. Right? It's interesting because I'll be honest, I really haven't, I mean I admire the top world level uh, kata athletes right now, but I never want to be them. It's for me, I want to be the best that I can and I see myself like wanting, like getting on that stage where they are. So, uh, it's the same models. Maybe back when I was like more junior, I wanted to be more like my sensei, Sensei Hashimoto, which is my, like, uh, 
he's still my current uh, uh, sensei. Um, but yeah, when I was younger, that was my model. And then when I got older, it's like, no, I want to be the best that I can be. So I know that's a little bit selfish answer, but like, like yeah, I didn't really think of myself as like, oh, I think of another person as like a role model, right? So. I think my biggest accomplishment so far is the Rotterdam performance. Like, I may have not meddled in that one, but for me to know that I can get to that stage at a K1 is like very important to me. So, it's like Pan Ams, yeah, sure, I meddled, but to be able to compete with everyone on a level playing field, like, to me, that was more important. I want to qualify for the Olympics. That, that's, yeah, I'm putting both feet into the water, I, I'm doing what I can to. Working, but now it's part time. I've saved a ton of money. Like, like now that I'm using, but it wasn't ever really for karate. But now it's like I'm dipping into that to help pay for karate. Um, of course, Karate Canada is helping me with um, some of the funds and stuff like that. And uh, Sport Canada has also uh, given me like um, a card, a carding. Um, they carded me, I would say. So it's also helping me pay. And um, of course, it's not everything, but it definitely. That I probably didn't join the national team sooner. Like in 2013 when I won um, that nationals, I wish that I had gone through it to see what it was like earlier on. Because I think I would have found that I loved traveling. Or like not just traveling, but like going to a higher level of competition, right? So, but at that point, I don't know whether it was because I didn't have enough money. I was a student at that point in 2013. but. Yeah, like, I feel like if I had joined a bit earlier, maybe I could have done, like, maybe I could have been in a different place now, right? So, yeah, I think that was my biggest mistake, joining the national team earlier in 2015. Joining karate earlier. I joined really late. So I was hoping that, like, maybe join seven. I hear everyone's like, oh, I joined when I was seven, I joined when I was eight. Like, well, I joined, like, seven years after you, so <laughs> I joined at 14. So I wish I found karate earlier. Like, I think I could, maybe it could have been a different um, end result, like, it could have been somewhere else, but again, I think I, oh, I would have really loved it to join earlier. Right? I think retirement. Probably either 2020 or 2021. Um, I think my end goal was to qualify the Olympics. If I don't make it, then that's what it is. I'm not going to try to push past 30. I don't think my body can handle that anymore. Like, I know I'm still young now, but I can start to feel the aches and pain. I don't want to go through that for another five, six, seven years. Or so. Two years for me is uh, kind of uh, what I'm pacing it at right now. Um, I think probably focus more on work. Um, I put that, I put my job on the back burner, but I do want to like work on more education, more training, more um, work, as well as like maybe even starting like a business. Like to me, that's very enticing. Like to do another business and like trying to grow. Like being an entrepreneur is like very exciting. And yeah, I think that's what I probably will jump into afterwards. Right? I don't think I'm going to quit karate. I think I'll always stay in karate, just not competitively, right? So yeah, it's, it's different that way. Karate is a lifelong journey. No, I'm not in school anymore. What did you study? I studied um, at a trade school, BCIT, uh, as for x-ray imaging. I do medical imaging, I work in the hospital, that's what I do. I don't have a boyfriend now. I don't know if I want children, that's still up in the air. I mean, I should be probably trying to find a boyfriend now if I want to have children later. So I'm going to leave that as I don't know. I do, I have two brothers. One is an older brother, one is a younger brother. So you're a middle child. Yes, I'm a troublemaker. Um, <laughs> Go on. What role did they play in your life? 
Oh, I think they played in a very important role. I think being um, kind of the only girl in the middle, we're, I got very competitive, right? But I think that was important because now I love competition and I love competing. And I, to me, that played a really important role. Yeah. I think I'm starting to get a hold of it now in terms of balancing. Um, but I do, I do make time. Like before, I tried to do everything for karate, and I sh like basically really, really shut down that family and like friends bit. But now that I've put more, like, see more of my family, I feel like it's helping my karate a bit more, okay. right? So for me, that balance is important. I just have, I, I make sure that I train first, like just in the morning, get it done. Or if there's plans, I try to do something beforehand. And then I go see them. Like I just make time for them now, right? So I think that's really important because having like a life outside karate, it, it's so important. You don't understand how important it is. But yeah, that's all I can say. Like you just have to make time for them, right? So. I used to love playing basketball, but that's because. Well, maybe the way I played basketball wasn't right. It's because I used to check people all the time, and I just love like defense and just like bring like driving into people. I think that was my favorite sport. Yeah. Hiking. Hiking. Yeah. When I was younger, I really wanted to do gymnastics. Actually, gymnastics as well as like a lot of other things. Like I really wanted to go to judo. I really wanted to learn how to throw people because it looks so fun just to throw people. So, and then I, I remember I was trying to schedule in judo in my karate schedule, it didn't work. <laughs> so for me, I think, yeah, learning how to like do tumbles and all the cool tricks and uh, throwing people is probably some, like the one thing I regret. It's like, oh, I wish I could fit that in with my karate schedule. I would say like my family's Buddhist, but I don't really do all the Buddhist things that you know we're supposed to do. Like go to the temple on certain days and all that. So sort of, yeah. So how important is it to you? Uh, my religion? Yeah. Not that important. I mean, like I like the sayings and all, but it's it's not something where I feel like completely adhered to. That's not. My coach will tell me that I'm a carnivore, so I love red meat and eating steak and all that. I'm still trying to get a hold of it, um, but generally I do eat pretty healthy. It has a lot of rice in it, I'll tell you right now. That's like my main carb. Um, but yeah, usually when I'm at home in terms of training and stuff, it's, it's I would say generally healthy. It's, I always get like half of them, half of my uh, plate is usually vegetables. Like a little bit is always rice and then some red meat. I mean, that's probably the only thing that should be like, more like chicken or something, that is what it is. <laughs> uh, sleeping varies. If I'm just on a normal training schedule, sleeping will be like, maybe seven, seven and a half hours. But if I have work as well, I'll probably sleep only five and a half, six hours. Yeah, so for me, having work part-time is very important. I can't do it full-time and train full-time as well. So yeah, that's the difference in sleep. You used to work full time, right? I used to work full time. Yeah. When did you uh, switch to part time? Uh, last, after last, I switched to part time. I want to say June of 2017. Okay, so yeah. like a little bit after Rotterdam. Yeah, got... a little bit after that fifth place um, Pan Ams. Yeah. Pan Ams. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm a very nice person, <laughs> so, so I want to say that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a selfish thing to say, but I'm going to say that. <laughs> I'm too impulsive. Too impulsive? Yeah. You, yeah. With my money, I'm really impulsive. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say, because I won't tell you what I bought. But <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit impulsive with my money.
think the worst thing that happened to me is like just being on the streets and just someone just being racist towards me. Really? That's probably one of the worst things that happened to me. Like I was just taking the bus, trying to go home. I was like maybe, I think 16 years old. And some guy, he just came out of a bar and just started like going off on me. He was like, you Chinese. And he was calling me all these bad words and stuff. Like that was like very racial and just saying all these mean things. And like, of course I was just a kid, like just a teenager, just trying to go home. And like, yeah, that's probably one of the worst things that happened to me because I just felt bad. Like, what did I do? I just want to go home. Like, I didn't do anything to you, right? So that's probably, yeah, I would say that was very memorable in my head. deciding to drop out of university. I know really? that might be controversial, but I felt like that was the best thing because I was on a path where my parents convinced, well, of course I was young, they're gonna convince me, university will be the way to like, you know, a happy life, you know, you're gonna have a good job, like everything will be secure there. I was in a program where I was studying chemistry and I hated it. Like first, second year wasn't so bad, third year is when I noticed like, oh my God, this is the wrong thing to do. And when one of my friends said to me, like, oh man, for you to be competitive, you gotta get a PhD in that. So that's so many more years of school. And I decided on that day, like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Went to, um, I think it, I went to admissions or something, and I dropped out that day. And of course, it was so scary for me to go home and be like, hey, mom and dad, I dropped out of university, right? But I mean, I think it was the best thing because I was able to find my trade school after. I mean, my dad, I, as soon as I explained to them, my dad was very supportive, like, this is my plan after university, I'm not gonna sit on the couch and do nothing. But that was probably, yeah, the best thing that happened to me because I ended up finding a job that I really liked, right? Going to extra school and then just working with people and in healthcare, yeah. So I would say that is the best thing that happened to me. Pineapple in a pizza. No. Smartphones for kids under 10? No. Under 12? No. Under 14? No. Under 16? Yes. Hitting yourself in kata? Ooh, I want to say no, even though I do it sometimes. <laughs> Spicy sauce? Spicy sauce, yes. Legalization of pot? Yes. And justify the means? No. Thor, the third movie, run your off. I haven't seen it. Uh, guns. Uh, no, I want to say no. No? I had to think about that. Okay. Oh, winter. Sorry. Winter, I hate winter, no. <laughs> <laughs> Karate at the Olympics. Yes. Small dogs. Uh, no. Self-driving cars. Self-driving cars. No, that's not fun. <laughs> Automated homes. Oh, no. That's weird. <laughs> Karate Kid with Jackie Chan. Oh, that movie. I kind of liked it, yes. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, Breaking Bad. Favorite joke? Dad jokes. Junk, <laughs> junk food? I want to say Lay's chips. Oh, drink. And whiskey. whiskey. Oh my god, this is bad. Okay, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Favorite season? Summer. Favorite quote? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good marketing on my <laughs> Favorite holiday? Christmas. Karate brand? Shredo. Color? The Color. green. Song? Kiss by a rose. By seal. <laughs> Band. I want to say Maroon 5. Book. Hunger Games. Mythological creature. Phoenix. Superhero. Spider Man. Video game. I like a lot of video games. Maple Story. Favorite weapon excluding firearms. Let's go with the katana. Favorite person in the world. I want to say my dad. Country to visit? I would like to visit Australia. I haven't been there. Country to live in? <laughs> I, would, I like Canada. Okay. I'm happy where I am. A competitor that you'd like to go against that you haven't went against yet? Let's go with, against the Shishimizu world champion right now. Yeah. I've never gone against him. One superpower? I want to be the fastest person in the world. Illness to cure? I can't say. Which one? Ooh, that's a good question. Which one is cure? Uh, lymphoma. Oh. One last meal before you die. Oh, pho. <laughs> Two Vietnamese of me. If you could change your name, what would it be? 
Uh, I think I want my name to be like. It's kind of weird. That's a weird question to ask. Oh, I think. <laughs> Allison. Allison. All right. One pet to adopt. A dog. One famous person to bring back to life. Lincoln Park, the guy, Chester, Bennington. I liked him. Now choose one, any person to bring back to life, they don't have to be famous. They don't have to be famous. I would want to bring back one of my aunts. Yeah. One age to have for the rest of your life. 22. Easy, 22. I felt invincible then. <laughs> one way to die. Let's say just, you know, in my sleep, dead. <laughs> That's fine too. One person to bring with you on a deserted island. I want to say my dad. He's probably the most MacGyver-like guy ever that I've known. So yeah, he would say. <laughs> one company to own. I want to own Google. One charity to finance. How about breast cancer research? One way to make money. Off the lottery. <laughs> Can I Off say the that? lottery? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> One last thing to do before you die. Skydive. Did you do it already? No, I haven't. That might kill me. <laughs> Plastic or metal? Metal. Water or fire? Water. Hot or cold? Hot. Orange juice or apple juice? Apple juice. Black or white? Black. Red or blue? Red. Cat or dog? Dog. Past or future? Future. Manga or comic? Comic. Uh, ski or snowboard? Snowboard. Forest or beach? Beach. Blackjack or poker? Blackjack. Superman or Batman? Superman. Boat or plane? Plane. Pirate or ninja? Ninja. Vampires or werewolves? Werewolves. And finally, Mac or PC? PC. That anyone is beautiful and I feel like if you keep training, you always have a chance to compete. Just keep training, right? Find ways to progress yourself. Just anyone is beatable. You can beat anybody if you keep at it. That's my one advice. We're actually, I was actually just talking to my coach about that. She's gonna program this um, program for me. Like, I think it's five, six weeks out now. So we're just gonna prepare, try to do the best at Worlds, and I'm trying to fight to get on the podium. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. Do you want to do a podium this year? Yes, I'm trying to fight for that because I already got seventh. It's possible, right? So yes. I'm trying to get on there, yeah. Points. I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait, but I'm thinking it's gonna be... This is what I'm thinking, Pan Am Games. My points aren't that bad because I am 19, but I was actually looking at the points. Some of the points are like quadruple, like from 19 to like 14. Like it's like way, like the points are crazy. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go to a qualifier. So we'll see, yeah. Like I was kind of changing my mind at the spot, but I, I think it's gonna be based on a qualifier. But who knows, it could be anything.